My name is Steven Weber, and this is Five Questions for She Knows Tech. I am the executive director of Berkeley NYC, which is Berkeley's um, presence in New York City, and I'm also the Dean of Strategic Initiatives at Berkeley College of Music. Um, I've been at the college for quite a while, and I started up uh, a few things, including all the DJ studies and turntablism studies, uh, 5.1 surround mixing, um, video uh, classes, music video classes, and I um, also started up the Music Production Technology and Innovation Master's degree program at uh, the Valencia campus, as well as helping to get the production team up and running here in the studio team and basically all the technology infrastructure running. I've always been really fascinated with music and all kinds of music. I, I started out playing classical piano, um, but I got very much into uh, popular music and rock and roll music. Um, I remember discovering the Beatles. It was amazing. My friend Mark Conhart and I went back and listened to all their old recordings on reel-to-reel -reel tape. As a matter of fact, his sister had all the Beatles records on reel-to-reel -reel tape somehow. I was very inspired by, by the Beatles, but also uh, by um, all sorts of folk music, bluegrass music, um, uh, as well as early music, classical music, uh, uh, Renaissance music, and then got into other styles of, of world music, everything from reggae to Hawaiian to uh, Indian music, and, and things like uh, instruments like sitars. So I, you know, I think part of it is that I have a short attention span, um, and I really, the, my favorite part of, of music is learning new stuff. So I, I play a whole bunch of different instruments, and actually in the 90s, after I was you know, a Berkeley professor, I got very interested in uh, the turntable, uh, playing the turntable as a musical instrument, um, a la the hip-hop tradition of turntablism and DJing. And so I, I you know, went out and found a bunch of mentors uh, on that, uh, including Grandmaster Flash and Grand Wizard Theodore and DJ Qbert, and fortunately those, those people were very happy to, to teach me and I wound up writing uh, the book Turntable Technique, The Art of the DJ, and, and some other books on that topic. Um, so it, I think lifelong learning and curiosity and short attention span is not necessarily a bad thing. I have so many female role models and mentors. Actually, my, my main guitar teachers uh, were always women. Um, uh, Terry Cox, when I was a kid uh, learning guitar, um, she was just the coolest person I had ever met. And she played, you know, electric guitar. She also played uh, Spanish guitar and classical guitar, which really helped me out when I got to college because in order to major in guitar, you had to play classical guitar. And most of the electric guitar players just crashed and burned on that requirement and dropped out. But I already had a lot of background in that because I studied with Terry. She was just so amazing. And then actually later, Sharon Isbin, who uh, runs the guitar program at, at Juilliard. Um, she's, I'd always admired her playing and um, finally getting a chance to study with her was a huge deal for me. I mean, she's, she's a lot of fun as a person, but as a teacher, she is absolutely just on it and, and no nonsense. And I learned a lot from her about just how serious she takes her art, you know, and how much time and effort she puts into just making sure that everything is really, really right. I'm actually very aware that being a male in not only this industry, but just in the world, uh, gives me a distinct advantage, to be honest with you. I don't know if, for some people, I think it's ben as benign as they're just used to seeing men in certain jobs. So that's what they expect. And I do feel like uh, we're finally making some progress on this. I know that there's going to be pushback, and there already has started to be some pushback against uh, the Me Too movement and, and the you know Times Up movement. Um, but I think it is really interesting that it's finally come to this, and um, I'm you know I'm really fascinated to see what happens next. You know, on some, in some ways it seems like we've made so much progress and then, you know, at the Grammy Awards the other night, 
was like, really, Bruno Mars? Really, that's what I like? I mean, that's, to me, that's such a sexist song. I can't actually stand that song. So I think there's just a lot of work to be done. I mean, it's, it's gonna take time. I think we're, I think the movement we're in now is a reaction um, that's been just building up for a really long time. And so, you know, these things are never neat. They're usually messy because there's just been so much building up that there, a lot has to be released. Um, but I'm really happy that it is uh, going on. So I would say that, yeah, you know, have I ever felt like I was getting an advantage for being, you know, a male? I'd say, yeah, pretty much every day. I think everybody has a role to play in, in trying to, uh, you know, help equalize the, the gender gap in, in the music industry. And especially in the music technology side of things, you know, that, that, that gender gap is so pronounced. One thing that we did here in, in Valencia is, is after the first year, where I think we had four women out of 20, is we set a goal to try and double the number of, of women that we had in the program, and we were able to do it. Um, and, and it took effort, you know, and it wasn't just we're going to let in more women. It was we actually had to try to go out and find them. You know, it was like, let's find some women who we think might be interested in, in you know, in, in doing this if they knew about it and make sure that they know about it. And I'm just, you know, I couldn't be more thrilled with the work that I see women doing, certainly in the MPTI program, um, but also just in the industry that is just next level, you know? And, and in some ways, um, the fact that, you know, that, that it was done um, by someone with a different point of view really has an impact on, on the art itself. And I think that, that, you know, we're starting to hear more voices um, and a diverser range of voices. And that's, I think that's a, that's a very, very good thing. And it's gonna, you know, a generation from now, two generations from now, three generations from now, you know, I'm hoping that uh, we have a much more interesting mix of, of things to choose from. I think what I would say is just just lighten up, you know, don't take it so seriously. The stuff that you feel like is a major problem, uh, five years from now, you're not even going to remember it, you know, in 10 years from now, it, you know, it, it'll be like it never happened. 